country on water, but on water in general, this is just you know one example. Um, so yeah, you're looking for a lot of things. It's a basic research strategy, though. I mean, you've got to read through stuff. You've got to uh, your research will indicate to you what's important and what's not important, and it will direct you. It will be your guide. And if you come, you know, if you find problems, go to your your human uh, resources, your human dictionaries, and say, hey, guys, look. You know more about this topic than I do. Can you help to direct me? Um, you know, use your libraries, use your librarians, use every smart person that you know to help you if you need to. Can you list off for me the countries that you have personally represented? I don't remember all of them. I've been Russia, I've been France, I've been China, uh, just to name a few. I've been Pakistan. Pakistan was my first country. Um, that was that was a lot of fun. I don't remember. I don't remember. A lot of the other Kenya, ones Uganda. I guess I was Kenya in here. Yeah. I think I was. We were Mali, weren't we? Mali. Yeah. Last year. Okay. Do you have a specific example? You were talking about water, but in some of the countries and committees that you were on, um, talk about some specific examples where you stumbled onto something and it turned out to be a, a gold nugget kind of a thing. Or do you have anything like that? Um. I can't really remember anything that was, you know, really fantastic. I had a lot of fun researching. I learned a lot. It didn't necessarily always apply in committee. There was a there was a 253 page document. I was in a legal committee. Okay, I knew, you know, almost every word of that thing by heart, and no one had read it. So that really didn't help me. I kind of had to throw that one out and, and make up some make up some new rules when I was when I was there. But every once in a while, there's a particular tidbit of information that I will recall in committee that will be helpful, but nothing uh, specific comes to mind. How, how has, um, from your first country of Pakistan to the last one you did, how has your um, approach changed any, if it has at all? I don't spend as much time drafting speeches. I didn't have a lot of public experience, speaking experience, experience before I started in Model UN, and so that was one of my goals, to be able to fine tune that sort of thing. I, st I had to use a lot of notes when I first started, and so now I don't need uh, as many notes when I, when I speak. I still like to jot things down before I get up in front of the microphone or whatnot. So that's changed. Um, I put less effort into, into my research now, because it's so, when you walk into a committee, you've got people from all different kinds of backgrounds, and not every single person has done a lot of research. So sometimes it's better to take time away from doing research and put more into, into strategizing, into people strategy, not so much uh, research strategy. So that's changed over the years. Talk about that as far as the dynamics of a room or of a, or of a committee and break it down for me from a, what you were just talking about, people strategy. There's, Talk about that. there's so many different things that could be going on. First of all, if you've got a huge committee, if you've got 200 people, then your strat and you're only one person and you don't have a partner, your your strategy is going to be different than if you're in security council and there's only you know a few people in that room. So if you have a big committee and there's only one there's only one of you, you've got to run around doing a lot of things. You've got to get your voice heard when you make speeches. You have to bounce around to each uh, little caucus group and make sure that you not only know what's going on in most of those groups, if not all of them, but you're trying to contribute something in each of those groups. And it's hard to it's hard to contribute something if you don't spend a lot of time in each one. So you have to balance all of this if you're just by yourself in a, in, in, in a big room. And moving an audience like that with you know with the little bit of time that you get in, in speech making can be can be difficult. If you have a partner if you have a partner, there's there's different strategies as well, depending on if your partner is capable at all. If your partner is not capable, okay, you want that person to stay out of the way because he or she is only going to make it worse. If they are capable, then you can direct them and you can say, okay, go watch this group, go watch that group, and then they can give you feedback. So it's like you're in two places at once if you have a reliable partner. And that really helps because you can be more effective that way. If you have a relatively small committee, like let's say there's only... 50 people instead of the 200, it's manageable, it's much more manageable. And so you can use that same approach and you can bounce around to the different groups, but you can contribute more to each group, as well as make your, your speeches when it's time to make speeches. 
if you are in Security Council, then it's kind of a, it's an entirely different situation. It's much more, to, to, from my experience, it's much more informal um, than, than, the, than the bigger committees. You can speak a lot more. Um, you're going to be contributing a lot more in general. When you do uh, a caucus, there's, I mean, there's only, you know, there's so few groups that your voice is very much heard in each of those groups, typically. So when you go into Security Council, it can change very rapidly. So you're going to want to have a broad point of view on, um, on just the policy in general in the country and the other countries that are with you in that committee. You're going to have to be ready to, to jump topics. You're going to have to be ready to jump strategies on those topics. You're going to have to be prepared to discuss very global perspectives as well as very specific policies within each of those countries. And if you don't know something, you can, I mean, you can cheat, it's not really cheating, but you know, you can look something up if you, if you don't know it and research it further kind of in the moment. But you really do have to wing it a lot more in the Security Council Committee. You're going a lot less on specific research that you've done and much more on instinct. What about the dynamic of whether you're representing a um, developing country versus a developed country? first world, third world, how does that change that whole dynamic that you just talked about? It, it, in some ways it can get frustrating because you have your developing countries which technically don't have a lot of power, don't have a lot of resources. In a model UN, you can, things change because if you're a powerful individual, if you're a, a person that can get the attention of the other people, then the balance of power essentially does change within the committee. So a small country in a model UN conference can technically influence the entire um, the entire group of countries much more so than that country ever could in a real life situation. So in that case it can change. If you are too realistic and work within the confines of your country's resources and what role you think they should play, uh, you know you may you're gonna you're gonna get frustrated, you're gonna get stuck, you're not gonna be able to go uh, very far with it. So that's where creativity comes in. And, and I do encourage a certain amount of creativity, a certain amount of thinking outside of the box at these conferences. Last question. Uh, what would your biggest uh, word of advice be to someone who's getting ready to prepare for New York for the first time? Definitely do your homework, but be prepared to change your strategy midstream if you need to and have confidence to make that decision. Um, don't be afraid, memorize the rules, but don't be afraid of the rules. Don't be afraid of your chair. Don't be afraid to ask questions of all of the people around you if you need to. But when you, you know, when you walk in that room, you know, you, you are in character at that point. Don't, don't deviate from that. So just, I mean, if you ever, if you have, if the person has an experience in acting, definitely call upon that when, uh, when you're preparing for a modeling conference, and I think you'll do just fine.